Welcome to the Cloud Developer channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the creation of a view in ASP.NET Core application. We're going to cover the part of installing Razor Language Service Extension, which is going to be helpful for us when we start actually using and building, customizing the view itself. We're going to talk about the basic folder structure and which files go where and how they get used. We're going to go ahead and create a new view to manage a set of database records that we already have uh, stored in our database. We're going to walk through the implementation of the new view to show you some of the details behind how it's actually implemented. And we're going to also add a link to the new view um, in the main application to allow the user to be able to get to the, to the view and be able to use it. And I'll actually walk through a quick demo of how to actually use the view that gets created as well. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the solution that we created before, which is the context application. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the Razor Language Services extension. And you do that by going to the Tools option and Extensions. And once this opens up, uh, you have to click on Online. And uh, here you just search for uh, a word razor. Once uh, it pops up, you can go ahead and click download. And it will ask you to restart. Um, so as soon as Visual Studio closes, it's going to automatically start the installation process. So I'll go ahead and do that now. The installer uh, will sometimes actually tell you that there's another uh, service that might be running in the background that it's waiting for it to close, and it will give you an ability to click a uh, end task button, and so you can go ahead and do that. Um, once all of those uh, dependent uh, processes are actually closed, uh, it will give you the ability to click the modify button, and um, in the modify button, I guess that's where it does that process. So you can go ahead and click on tasks here. It will kill all of those processes and start the installation process. So once it completes, you can go ahead and click close and open up Visual Studio once again. And we'll go ahead and open up the project once more. As you can see, the solution has loaded. And what we're going to do now is we're going to begin by creating a new view. Um, and to do that, we need to understand a little bit about the folder structure. So in the ASP.NET application, MVC application specifically, there are two uh, very important folders that you need to know about. One is the controllers folder, and the other one is the views folder. The controller folder is uh, a folder that contains what we call controllers, and controllers are classes in .NET that allow you to build logic that takes all the data from different services, different databases, and will allow the application to be able to pass that information to a view. And the view is used to then take that information and actually present it to the user. So in this case, we're looking at the home controller, which we've uh, seen before in our previous videos. And this controller takes in the context, context object and this is what gives us access to the database and then in our index view we actually or the index action I should say uh, we actually um, query the people list and we pass it back to the view itself and the view then renders the information in the uh, whatever format that you choose uh, to render it in. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to create a separate view um, that is going to be used to render the same information. However, it's going to be a little bit more advanced version of what we do here. Um, it's going to allow us to actually create new records, delete records, edit records, as well as see all of the records in uh, a better looking table structure. And the way to do that is you can actually right click on this controller folder here and um, go to add and then in the controller um, section here, you can actually, if you click on this controller, um, what it's going to do is it's going to prompt you to add MVC dependencies. 
Now, I already have them, but Visual Studio doesn't know about that yet. So it asks you if you want to add the minimal dependencies or full dependencies. And what this does is actually adds um, what is called scaffolding templates and uh, ability to perform scaffolding um, type of operations. And I'll show you real quick. There's another way to actually add a controller directly if you don't want to use um, a scaffolding feature. And that is by simply right clicking, going to add, and clicking new item. And then here under ASP.NET Core, you can just click an MVC controller class. Now, if you do this, uh, it will simply create a, an empty class that gives you the index action and then you'll have to make sure that you create a corresponding uh, folder structure under the views. In this case it would be uh, just like we have home you would have to create a folder called test and any view that uh, shows up under that test folder just like we have here in the context and about um, you would actually be able to put in a view so for example for a test controller if we put in um, an index CSHTML um, we would create a folder called test so let's go ahead and actually do that here and then here uh, we can go ahead and add a new item and we'll call that index and in here it just creates a, a pretty bare uh, file here that doesn't really have any any deal details in here so if we wanted to we can uh, add something like uh, an h2 tag with uh, test in index page and now if we actually try to uh, launch this well, we should be able to see uh, once the application launches, uh, we should be able to actually navigate to slash test and actually see the HTML structure. So let's try that here. And as you can see, that's the new view that we created. So this is uh, in a case where you wanted to just do a very minimal uh, view in a controller, you can do that. Another thing you can do, and um, we, I'll show you that right now as well, is I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, test view folder and the test controller so we don't have uh, garbage in our project. And I'm going to actually go and use that scaffolding feature. Now I'll go back to add and controller, and I'll let uh, Visual Studio actually add full dependencies. And what this is going to allow us to do is actually use the scaffolding feature, which um, Basically, think of it as a template um, that creates all of the different views. Um, it can actually reference the different uh, entity framework context, context that you create, as well as allow you to kind of pre-set up your view that you can adjust if, uh, if you don't want to start from scratch. So once this completes, um, in, in our case, all of this information has already been set up. Uh, you can see that in a startup class um, that all of this logic has already been put in place by the default project uh, template itself. So we can go ahead and close this. Um, and now we can right click again, add, go to controller, and now we see a different view here. So in this case, we have uh, a few different options. And uh, the first option is basically uh, an empty controller, just like we saw before. You can have a controller that has read-write actions, and you can have a controller that actually gives you the views for a particular entity framework uh, object that you want to be able to manipulate. And I'm going to go ahead and choose this because we actually do have an entity framework uh, class that's called person that allows us to uh, create an object that has first name, last name, and birthday. And when I click Add, in here it's going to actually ask me what is the model class. And this model class is the actual object that we want to be able to manipulate uh, and show to the user in our application. But what is the actual backing object that's going to be uh, persistent in the database? And because we already have the project references, it knows about this person object. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. The data context class is the class that is used by this application to be able to actually talk to the database and this is our contacts context object and I'll go ahead and choose that 
I'm gonna also leave all these checkboxes checked here. What this is gonna do is actually generate the um, the views that are called CRUD views, create, update, and delete type of views. It's gonna reference all of the necessary script libraries and uh, use the layout page. So in this case, I'm gonna leave it empty and allow the view start file that is defined uh, right here to dictate what is the layout page that it wants to use. And then the last thing is the, the name of the actual controller that is going to be used to generate. Now this is actually taken from the model class and then it adds controller to it. So does this make sense? So we can go ahead and click add here. And now this is actually going to go ahead and create that similar looking folder structure that we created manually before um, under the, the views folder as well as going to generate the actual uh, per, uh, the people controller uh, class itself. And one of the first things you'll notice is that uh, by default is this controller class actually already has a reference to the context context object and it populates inside of the um, private variable that is read only. And then you can also see that there are a bunch of different functions that are populated by default. All of these are actually needed in order to be able to uh, display the information as well as uh, get the details of the records and uh, create different objects um, as well as update. So let's uh, let's take a look uh, in the beginning. So this is our constructor. Here is our index view and this allows us to actually get a listing of all the different people objects that are stored in a database the details uh, action is actually used to be able to display the details of a particular record that is selected. The create um, action here, this is used to display a screen to be able to create a new uh, person object before it gets populated. The the next create action is actually, uh, if you notice, that it has an HTTP post action here and a validate anti-forgery token. This is actually used to uh, create the record in a, in a database and the information that is populated in the screen is then sent to this create action with the following attributes that are listed here and it populates inside of this person class. And then the logic inside of this method actually is used to add the information to the context object that we saw in the constructor. It saves the changes to the database and then redirects back to the index action which uh, shows us the actual list of the records in the database. The following action here is actually the added action and this is actually used to display the information when somebody wants to actually be able to edit a record. So in this case it takes in the ID of that record. Um, if it doesn't find it, it will give you an error. If it does find it, it will actually go back and render the view so that you can now go ahead and modify that information and then hit save. Now this uh, following edit action, again, just like the create one, has an HTTP post um, in here. And this is actually used to take the information that the user modified on the screen and put it back inside of the database. So again, it uses the bind um, attribute to be able to populate information inside of the person object. And then it looks to see if the model is actually valid. Model is the data and the details that are coming from the actual uh, user. And if it finds everything to be okay, it's going to go ahead and call the update method and pass in the person object itself. And then it was, is going to ask the database to go ahead and save the changes. And if there are any issues, uh, we would actually see an error show up here. And then the user is actually taken back to the index page which uh, shows the, the listing of all the records. In the case of a failure it would actually be taken back to the edit view to allow the user to make the necessary changes and um, go ahead and save the changes again. Um, we also have a delete action that takes in the ID and this will actually um, allow the user to confirm that they truly want to delete the record with the ID of uh, whatever they they chose on the screen. And uh, when the user hits delete, it's going to go to this um, final action 
that is delete confirmed and again this is an HTTP post um, and it's going to allow the user to then say yes I truly want to delete this object so go ahead and uh, get that from a database based on the ID it's going to remove it from the database context and it's going to tell the database to go ahead and save the changes and again we're going to be taken back to the index section to list uh, the records from a database so this is just kind of a high level um, of the, the controller that gets created for you and you can add more logic for validation for making sure that the person has the right permissions um, you know etc the, the type of logic that you would need to have in order uh, for you to meet the requirements for your application now another thing to show you real quick is in the views folder we actually see a, a people folder now as well and in here you can see all the different views you know, there's a create view delete view details view edit view and an index view inside of the index view you can actually see that there is um, information here to render about uh, the the label for the first name last name birth date you can see that that's actually being written inside of the table HTML structure and the uh, T head actually is a way to display the columns uh, in a table and then we have a for each that goes through the model which is actually the person object and it's going to render the uh, the different fields from a database so you can see it will actually render first name last name and birth date and in here um, the anchor tags which are basically links allow us to perform operations such as edit details and delete where edit allows us to actually update the record details just show us the details of a record and delete allows us to actually trigger the deletion process for that given record so uh, all of these views are um, kind of similar uh, in in that the create actually gives you some input uh, fields the delete allows you to just see the actual uh, information in read-only mode details allow you to actually um, see the details as well and then edit allows you to actually update so it gives you the ability to have input so let's actually go ahead and launch this application and see what this looks like now once this launches we don't actually have a menu uh, to use to navigate uh, but what we can do is we simply can navigate to the people um, route and this route is what we're going to actually add to our main menu a little bit later but as you can see we were able to load the index page and then here you can see the actual table that displays you the first name last name and birth date information now if I wanted to be able to edit this record I can click edit and it's going to take me to the people slash edit and then the record ID and then here I can put in a uh, last name of Joe uh, well, Smith and I can add two to it and if I hit save it takes me back to the index page and you can see it updated the record I can go ahead and, and change that back hit save and it removes that information now if I want to be able to click details and just see all the details and notice that the formatting is a little bit different here now um, it uh, allows you to actually show information either from the table or other uh, details that you can pull in from a database if you have additional information to pull and you can display it here because you don't always want to display that on your index page uh, or the page that lists all the different records because it might be too much information and then you can also uh, click delete and it will allow you to delete so instead of me deleting this one record here what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a new one and I'll call um, this person John Doe and um, I'm not gonna put anything for the birth date and if you remember the birth date was a nullable field means that that I don't have to actually put in a value here and it will uh, create it correctly in a database so in here again we have all the same functionality I can click details see the information and if I wanted to delete it I can hit delete and in here it wants to confirm that you sure you want to delete this record and then I can go ahead and hit delete here and it will remove it from a database so this is kind of a, a very uh, quick walkthrough of you know how to manage records in a database and uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually add a link to this view 
um, in this application so that the people who are using this application don't have to know how to actually manually put in the information in the URL to get to this view. And the process for doing this is pretty straightforward. So what we need to do first is we need to find the main layout um, for this application and you can actually see what the main layout file is going to be by opening up this view start and in here it actually points to underscore layout this underscore layout is actually a reference to a view that's in the shared folder and you can see we have one called underscore layout.cshtml and if I open this, uh, if you remember, we actually updated this view to change uh, the application title to be pulled from the app settings JSON file. So what I want to do now is I want to actually add another um, link in our main navigation. And as you can see, we have home, about, and contact um, specified right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify another uh, list item and I'm going to make it an anchor tag as well and um, basically follow the same um, implementation that they have above. So the controller that we're going to be referencing here is actually not going to be the home controller anymore. This is going to be a people controller, but uh, you omit the controller part. And then the action that I want the user to be taken to is an index action as well. And I'm going to go ahead and close uh, the anchor tag. And in the actual display, what we want to show is uh, the actual text that the person will see on the screen. So in here, we're just going to call it people. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And if I launch this once again, you'll actually notice that a new navigation item shows up that allows us to actually uh, navigate to that new set of screens that we just uh, walked through. So again, here we have home, people, about, and contact. So now if I click this people link, it actually takes me to this uh, new set of views. So, And I can go ahead and uh, do the creation of this record again. And the thing that I actually wanted to show you is uh, if you go back to the home page, you can see that this is actually reading from a database as well. And that new record actually shows up right here. So um, this is basically what I wanted to show you, a very quick and simple way to be able to manage records in a database without much coding uh, required. Now, if you want to start customizing this functionality, we're going to cover some topics uh, around, you know, how do you actually adjust the validation? How do you make a change to display the different labels um, and uh, many more complex more complex and advanced features that are supported by ASP.NET Core applications. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And I look forward to talking to you about this again.